I'm going to preach tonight about sanctified imagination. How many know the sanctified imagination is different? There is a cleansing in our minds that need to take place. In other words, our minds need to be on things above, not things beneath. There needs to be a reset of some things. And Webster sometimes is anointed. If you look up some definitions and the things of God in Webster, there's an anointing upon that. And Webster, uh, uh, Webster's imagination means this, the power of the mind to form a mental image or concept of something that is unreal or not present. Such power of the mind used creativity or creatively to see in the mind and bring it into reality. Imagination. See, sometimes you imagine before it happens. You have to see it before it be it. <laughs> sometimes you have to dream it for it to exist. Webster's imagine to form a mental image or picture or also to think Also, to have a notion without tangible foundation. See, we, uh, what we're going to be talking about here is that God has created us to be thinking as a visionary. We're supposed to be imaginative. Sometimes little children are imaginative. And along the way, this world takes away our imagination. Until you get back into things of God, and then you start getting that visionating back. Hallelujah is what I like to call it. Come on. And I want you to understand that this type of imaginative type of people with the ability to be able to call things that are not as though they were. Through the means of something that is called sanctified imagination see god wants us to imagine but but keep it sanctified he wants us to imagine things as the things of god but keep it holy see some people imagine and get off get way off and this service here tonight the pre-service so to speak the ministry time before i preached tonight was to show us that we have to be way, way out there to be way off. Because he was happy with us having a good time in the presence. And I want you to think about that for a minute. When we imagine, where imagination only takes us so far. And if you limit to your religion, you re limit to, to that which you only see or only think God will do, you will limit the way God will do. Now understand, you imagine, but it has to line up with the Word of God. But at the same time, the more cautious you are, the more bound you'll be. And God wants you to imagine to victory. You've got to be able to see in the realm of the Spirit and know in the realm of God. And go with the flow and allow God. And I believe the grace of God is there more that I won't go too far than it is to not be there at all. Hallelujah. There's sin in the camp when people get too far. Why? Because the grace is lifting. That's the way people get out there and never come back. And get corrupt and twisted. Because they're full of sin. Certain people have made love to angels. According to their mouth. That is an abomination to God. The only angels that make love to anyone and has ever done that is the ones from the demonic realm. So if they had sexual relations with an angel, it wasn't from God. So either they got too far out there or they're on the dark side. 
they seemed like they were going the right direction for a season, but then come to find out, history unfolded, and for that season, they were drinking alcohol with the team. And then they started seeing this. See, they opened the door. Sin came in, and then they got off. See, our imagination is a sanctified imagination can take us to the sky. Sky will be the limit. We shall go places that we've never gone before, and no man has gone before. As already stated, the word imagination, according to Webster's Dictionary, states imagination is the power of the mind to form a mental image or concept, something that is unreal or not yet present. See, in other words, in this natural realm, things are considered unreal. Some people don't believe in angels, but they exist. Some people don't believe in God, but He exists. Sanctified imagination. God has created us in his image, according to Genesis, so we could be like him in the aspect of creating and bringing into existence just like he does. Come on. If you look at the Genesis beginning, over and over and over again, there was revelation. Of how he saw, and then he done, did what he saw. Jesus only did what he saw the Father do. To see, we continue. See, imagination. Some people who float in the miracle signs and wonders never have testified to this much, but it is revelation that I have received from several people. Is whenever somebody lays hands on somebody on a wheel in a wheelchair, they imagine them walking. They step outside themselves into the unreal realm. See, the natural realm says that diagnosis, that crippling thing is upon them. They will never walk again. But in the imagination sanctified by God only, you can imagine and begin to see. And then as you're seeing, God comes on the scene, and he can anoint that, and you'll begin to see what he is doing. There's a miraculous realm opening right now. And not just through a, a procreation and, ha and having children, but I believe many different ways artistically and visually we are to have our imaginations anointed. In order to bring something into being, we must first see it visually. How many have ever cooked? You see what you're looking for. You know and have an expectancy of what it's going to turn out like. If it's in the oven too long, it comes out different than what you visioned. Sometimes you're baking cookies that come out black. Your vision does not line up with your provision. So what do you do? You get another batch <laughs> and put it in this time, and you're like, I'm just going to watch it. I'm not going to let it happen again. See, a lot of us don't realize, but God's anointing us tonight. This imagination process has been given to us by God to be used with faith in birthing his purposes. See, sanctified imagination means he's already given it to you first that's why a lot of times soaking in the presence of God gets you to dwell on things above not things beneath sleeping at the night time and getting interrupted by the spirit of God is God anointing you and giving you a sanctified imagination sometimes you dream dreams that are from God sometimes not but you got to allow God to utilize that ability you got to allow God to open that part of your mind 
God has used, uh, has, has made, made man creative just like him. He's made us creative. When an artist begins to paint, he sees as he paints. There's a sanctified imagination. Every physical item you see around you right now, just begin to look around the room. Every physical item around you right now, every picture, every frame, every bucket, come on, every outlet, thermostat, whatever it is, speaker, a sound system, even this wood and the way it looks, everything, someone had to envision it to bring it to an end result. They had to bring it from a creative, thank you. Some of you are anointed to create. Some of you are anointed to create things by God. And God wants you to create things that he downloads into you. So your sanctified imagination will be anointed in the days ahead after tonight because the Lord says it's time for us to do as we see the Father do, to do and perform as we see the Father perform. The artist has, an, has a vision. Whether you know it or not, somebody who created a light switch was an artist because they had to think it has to have this point of contact and this point of contact that when these wires are connected to it, every time it's flipped on, the lights come on. Every time it's flipped off, the lights come off. It had to come from a vision. How many have ever cooked a recipe somebody gave you? Sometimes a recipe that's been given to you is hard to cook. You say, why? First time, it's very hard. Why? Because you don't see it. You don't know what it's supposed to look like. Is this what it's supposed to be? Is this what it's supposed to look like? I knew a woman. She got a cake recipe from somebody, and it called for a cup of coffee. She took the grounds, a whole full grounds, a whole full cup of grounds of coffee and dumped it in that cake. It didn't say enough detail for this woman. So this whole cake had grounds of coffee throughout. It was a white cake with a bunch of spots. How many know that her vision wasn't lining up to the recipe because she didn't have it. Some of us are trying to do something. Some people go to a revival and they try to do what they saw other revivals do. But it doesn't come out right sometimes. Why? Because they don't know all the ingredients and how to put them in. See, you've got to allow God to sanctify your imagination and give you the vision. Oh, come on. I'm preaching better than I'm hearing. The product at the end of the result is theory uh, is a th and theory to bring it to present reality. See, sometimes we don't realize we are actually bringing something into reality. When you wash clothes, you have a certain vision to see those clothes. When you bring a shirt out that the child got nasty and never told you about, and you get it out of the dryer and it still has that spot on the front, what do you do? That didn't line up with your vision. Now you're like, oh, it's stained forever. 
See, sometimes we don't realize somebody will have something put into your vision to mess it up. They'll leave a spot behind or two to mess it up. I am going somewhere. A lot of wheels turning. You know why? Your wheels are turning better tonight. It's because we had to get your mind out of the way first. Oh, that was his plan, not mine. <laughs> the power to envision, my first point. Many of us have been taught to believe that anything to do with imagination is new age. I've said this a couple times before, but I want to hear, I want to say this again. And that, that it's, it, people think it's something to do with the occult because it's imagining. You're imagining, you know, you're, you're thinking on things. Mind over matter. This is not a Bruce Lee movie. And the New Agers and a cult stole something from God. See, in the Word of God, there were trances. In the Word of God, there were, there were people who just thought upon things of God. There was already these things going on in the Word of God, but somewhere along the line, we lost something. And really, New Agers and occults did it better than Christians. But they did it for the demonic realm. So now it's gotten to be more of a common thing for them than us. It's time that we take the power to envision back from the demonic realm. It's time to take it back. I only do what I see the Father do. See, that's somebody with a sanctified imagination. It's time that we start using what God has given us to wreak havoc on the kingdom of darkness. See, it is God who speaks of the non-existence, the non-existent things as though they already exist. That be not as though they were. That be not as though they were. What is that? Be not as though they were. In other words, they didn't exist yet. But we are to speak them out as though they already did exist. Why? Because every imagination that is sanctified by God, you catch this, you will roll the timbers of hell. If you get a sanctified imagination... If you really obtain the full sanctified imagination of seeing those things as though they were, you actually are actually releasing an imagination that was thought first there. And you're bringing it down here and it manifests here. See, everything that's going to be yet to come down the road, inventions, history, the next car, the next plan, the next plane, the next uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, today, every, every electronic, everything that's going to be created, that's going to come out of something designed, created, is already in heaven. Yes. Waiting to be downloaded. You just got to connect to it and begin to download it. Proverbs 23, 7 says, As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Time and time again, we'll hear pastors say this, leaders say to one another, what's your vision for the ministry? Isn't that common? 
What's the vision for your ministry? What they're really saying is, what do you envision? What do you imagine? What do you see? What are you calling into existence? See, what you have a vision for means it doesn't exist yet. You never say, well, I see us, you know, being in a building with about 15 people. That's not a vision. That's existence. I see us, you know, out at a park going nowhere. That's existence. See, believing God for what has not yet been present. Why do you think it's impossible to please him without what? Faith. Why do you think? Because guess what? If you're not really believing for something that doesn't exist yet, then you're not really a child of God. I don't know about you, but sometimes it gets sickening to always have to be looking for something, expecting something, always having to. But at the same time, I would not be a child of God if I wasn't living by faith. It's important that we see ourselves the way God sees us. How many have ever heard that? See yourself the way God sees you. What is that? In other words, you're not supposed to be able to just look at yourself the way you are now. But the way God sees you. See, God sees you as a finished work. You see you as a no work. <laughs> See, the way God sees you. See, God sees you as anointed. God sees you as gifted. Do you think every singer who's ever sung a song where the crowd has cheered as they sing the song, do you think every one of those people who sung the first song they sung, people cheered? You have to practice. You have to step out and begin to try to get what is in your heart, the imagination on that gifting, on that ability, and begin to pour it out. Even a book writer, as they're writing the book, they're actually seeing. I've actually talked to people about writing their book, and they're writing, and, 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 and they try to ask me for help, and I tell them, it's your book. You need to tell me what you see. They're like, what should I do here? What should I do? What about this person? Should they do this? It's your vision, yeah. not mine. We are citizens of heaven. Isn't that right? We must be transformed from the natural thinking to heavenly thinking. God breathed the breath of life and all eternity into Adam. The breath of life came into Adam. For all of eternity was breathed into him. God just... Adam's destiny and identity of citizenship or imagination, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, all came out of eternity, of eternities. In other words, when God breathed into Adam, the abilities that he got was, it came straight from the throne of God. It came out of his imagination. God says, name all the animals. See, he had to not just name them, but put them in categories. He had to do something beyond himself. He did not have an education. He did not have a father or a mother to lean on. He didn't have anybody but what God downloaded into him. And we have that inheritance back for what Jesus redeemed for us. So that same imagination that was given to Adam to begin to have a creative atmosphere, a creative mindset, to be able to name animals and put them in categories of mammal and not and supernatural and fish and just categories categorize everything and be able to organize it just the way God intended it. He was given all authority. He was given all authority and he was able to do it because of his imagination. 
And because of what Jesus did, we get that back. See, God did it first. And then he said, I want, I want, I want to have somebody do it. So we got Adam into the midst. He said, okay, you continue what I started. Oh, there's power in this. Psalms 139. I'm just going to read it. Most of you are pretty paralyzed. Chapter 139, verse 13 through 17 says this. You did form my inward parts. You did knit me together in my mother's womb. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being formed in secret in the depths of the earth. Your eyes saw my unformed sus substance in your book. All the days of my life were written before ever they took shape. When, <laughs> as yet, there was none of them. How precious are your thoughts to me, O God. That's Psalms 139, verse 13 through 17. Our, citizens, our, citizens, our citizenship is not of this world. We do not have our origin here. He's creating us into who we are there. See, the problem with most of us, we try to stay connected more here than there. So we're basing our identity on who we are here. See, somebody even said this week, we need to see ourselves the way God sees us. We need to find, begin to see ourselves. We need to recognize who we are. We need to get to know who we really are. See, when you know who you are and you know who your God is, you're not of this earth anymore. You're of that realm. Listen, we are the very offspring of God. Doesn't this tell us something of our ability to access the very home from where we came? See, we have access to home. See, when you leave tonight, you're saying, I'm going home. Well, if you are, you're going that way. Our imagination was given to us by God as a means to be able to creatively bring into existence the spirit into the natural. The will of God for our families, homes, ministries, businesses, cities, states, and nations. The ability to bring heaven down upon it. My next point. Is simply sealed and ordered. When it's sealed and ordered, in other words, heaven's already made the decision. Yeah. It's sealed and it's ordered. We have a blueprint or a destiny from God in us, on us, that is unsearchable. It's unchangeable. Why? Our destiny is already done. See, God makes us in His image. And He sets a destiny for us in the realm of the Spirit. And if we would just catch that in the fullness of the realm of the Spirit and imagine ourselves as He sees us, it would be just like a factory line. The mantles will fall upon you at a certain pl place in the, in the factory line. The gifts will come wide open on you. And the next, the ministry will unfold upon you. The marriage that you're supposed to be in, all that you're supposed to have, the ability to, to, to obtain wealth and to be that who you're supposed to be, all of it is already decided in your DNA. See, when a child of a king is born, their future is already predestined. It's 
kind of like Princess Diana when she passed away many years ago. That was a robbery of her inheritance. And that there's things that we, has never been revealed, never been revealed. But that woman was literally murdered. And I want you to understand there's so much chaos that takes place. People trying to fight for, for a kingship and, a, and a, being a prince and being a king and a queen. But we are, have a blueprint. Most often, the very things we have, strong, godly desires to see come to pass in our very lives, has been sealed and ordered. How much more fight would you really have in the things of God if you knew you had a, had a contract that said, <laughs> you have a God-given right to, for this that you're about to obtain? How much more confidence would we have if we knew this building belonged to us before it belonged to us? How much more confidence would you have to spend something that you have now when you know more is coming? See, our imagination has been stuck on tilt. You imagine and you look at your checkbook. You imagine and look up your bank account. Well, that's as far as you get. Why? Because you're looking in the wrong kingdom. See, we bring about birthing of the purposes of God because it's planned and simply has been impregnated in our spiritual DNA. If we can't bring it about, we'll agonize until it happens. When you're pregnant, if you can't get the baby out, you're going to agonize until it's coming out. Isn't that right? You're not going to be impatient about it. You're going to be like, drive me over the railroad tracks. You're going to be like, come on, let's just get this thing going. Let's get it moving forward. Some of you men don't know what I'm talking about. So let's go to another level. If you've got a, a, a certain bowel movement that is much needed, if you've got a stone that needs to come out, sometimes you just finally want to say, come out already. Just get it gone. See, there's an agony that takes place. And many of us wonder what will, what the will of God is in our lives when it's already written. What's the will of your? What's the will of my life? What's your will for me? It's already written. I told you this before. A man that I knew, he was messing with the Bible code. And I want you to know there's a reality of this, but I don't believe it's for everyone. In fact, I don't believe it. most anyone should never probably try to figure this out. But the Bible code does have a reality in it. But you could type in uh, your name, and it actually would tell you specific things in the Bible by using a certain wording, the way the Bible writes. Hallelujah. It might come diagonal just like a crossword puzzle, but it will name people that you're going to marry. It'll name people that you're supposed to be with. It'll name your, your, your occupation. It'll name where you've been. It'll name the name of your ministry. See, when I was associated with prophetic healing ministries, I want you to know I actually saw that in the Bible code before, I mean, after the name had already been created. And it's in the Bible. It's just used in the Bible. It's used in the software. You don't, all you do is type in your name, and, 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 and it finds you. In the Bible. And it and there's even details that you can find out of when you die. How many know that sometimes too much information? That's why I said it's great for some things because it proves how powerful and how much God has already said this, this, and this will take place in your life. It's like the Bible is being written right now. See, when the Bible was written, the Bible was written for you too. And your message is still in the Bible. Come on, it blows your mind. It really does blow your mind. Hallelujah.
See, some people become so consumed by, by trying to find out things, they forget to go do things. <laughs> So I want you to understand there is something supernatural God wants, to, wants us all to know. It's already been written. That's why you've got to visualize. You've got to visualize. As I get along with the Lord sometimes, what do I do? I find myself visualizing. Thinking upon God. See, so sometimes you pray and you don't let him take you into the realm of seeing I've laid in services before the service during worship, and I see what we do before we do it. That's visualizing. See, I find myself visualizing casting out demons with a word. I find myself uh, and God backing me up with powerful signs and wonders, watching the glory of God sweep a football size uh, uh, amphitheater. See, the glory sweeping the size of a football stadium. See, what are we going to do when God explodes? See, I'm visualizing. See, you got to watch the power in the realm of the Spirit before it demonstrates. See, this is what radiant glory comes from. See, many of us see glory, but we don't want to see the radiant glory. The glory that sees in the realm of the Spirit. See, there's a level of glory that comes down and causes people to get filled with the Spirit in such a way that they'll see what nation they're called to. They'll see where they're supposed to go. They'll have an identity uh, supernaturally resurrected. It comes from visualizing. Where there is no vision, the people perish. See, the church today as a whole has no vision. They're not visualizing anything. They go to church and they leave. They go to church and they leave. They go to church and they leave. If somebody sits in their seat, they get upset. See, I'm going to to go far as far as to say that unless we visualize and give expression to the prophetic dreams and visions that come from the that come from the holy one that lives on the inside of us we'll begin to dry up and lose hope courage and eventually we'll settle for less see some people settle for less some people have settled in marriages. Some people have settled in, in, in relationships and, and with others. And, and some people have settled with certain friends. How can we begin to believe that we can move the third heaven revelations and visitations if we've been blocked in our own believing? And experiencing our own imagination. See, we're supposed to be able to engage the realm of this revelation. In other words, we're supposed to be engaging to the third heavens. If we're hungry about moving the same kinds of experiences of Ezekiel and Isaiah, we need a road. A supernatural road that just is so fresh to the third heaven that the experiences just start coming because we start asking and saying, God, I want to see. See, we, we need to be taking time to soak. Do you take time to soak? You know what most Christians try to do? Save all their time with the Lord till right before bed. You know why? Because that's the lazy way. You know why? Most people, they'll just knock off the sleep instead of actually being with the Lord. Can I do it while I do something else? That's another one. Isn't that, isn't that the way we are? Isn't that the way we are?
See, what Daniel and Ezekiel and Isaiah saw, when we engage ourselves in this manner, it's only a matter of time before we find ourselves with the throne room of God. Remember, God is a rewarder of those that seek him every once in a while. Anybody get that? God is a rewarder of those to seek him when they feel like it. God is a rewarder of those that only diligently seek him. Diligently. See, sometimes youth are more diligent about snacks. Imagine kids came home from school and ran to the bedroom to pray. Imagine if we did something that we do already, but instead we put God in the midst of it. See, we've got to be on hot pursuit for the things of God. We're expecting God to come down from the heavens and just sanctify us and blow us away. But guess what? Everywhere in the Word of God, everywhere in the Word of God, you do something before He does anything. You confess before He forgives. You draw near before He draws. Come on. Everything in the Word of God, He says, step first. He says, I want to show you things. Start imagining. I only do what I see the Father do. So some of us are waiting to see what the Father's doing. You can't see what the Father's doing until you start to see. you got to start imagining so that you can see. This is good stuff, better than my amens at the night. Remember, unless we get ourselves in using our imagination in a sanctified manner as God intended for us to use it, unless we take action, Back from the devil, the sacred practice, an understanding and moving in a sanctified imagination. We would be at great disadvantage if we're not imagining things of God. We'll be at such a disadvantage. See, God needs dreamers. who aren't afraid to move in visions. See, people like John G. Lake, Catherine Coleman. Let's stay on Catherine Coleman for a second. She began to explain what she saw. Imagine, saw, visioned. Oh, throne rooms in, our, in this place tonight. She looks spooky and acts spooky. <laughs> Oh, he's so wonderful. And then she'd get this unusual look in her eye that I see on many people. I've seen on several people in this room. When the presence of God something comes so strong in their life, and they go, she'd just say, he's here. Sometimes when I play the drums, I leave here. Sometimes when I just worship, I leave here. Whether justice knows it or not, sometimes she has left here in the last day. Because we're imagining. So you've got to stop look, looking around, thinking about everybody else. What are they going to think? Just get lost. And imagine yourself sitting with the Lord. Imagine yourself going to the throne room. There's going to be times that we're all going to be going up so much in the things of God that we will be able to be in different places in the sanctuary, a big place where you're not going to be able to look across the room and always see each other. But there's going to be some times that people are going to be so deep in the realm of the Spirit that I'm going to look over in the throne room and see Joseph praying. 
He's going to look over and see you guys praying. He's, and I'm telling you, why? Because we're going to be going to the same place. See, when somebody begins to see something in the realm of the Spirit and begins to share what they're seeing, what they're doing is bringing us into the realm of the imagination. The realm of sanctified imagination. There's a waterfall of provision. There's big balls of fruit coming down. See, it's cu you're coming into it, praise God. You're coming into the, the sanctified imagination. You don't come into it unless it's shared. We have not received the spirit of this world. We've received the Holy Spirit. That is from God. That we might realize and comprehend and apprehend. That we might realize, <laughs> comprehend, or understand, and apprehend the gifts of divine favor and blessing so freely given to us by God. 1 Corinthians 2.12. See, we re need to remember, we're adopted. You've been given benefits now because of your adoption papers. Your God-given rights has been given to you to be able to do what you've not been able to do before. We are to have a sanctified imagination. See, people get flaky and get kooky, but at the same time, guess what? There is a realm of glory that is silly, having a good time in the things of God, but there's also a seriousness of the presence of God that is so glorious and revelatory. And it can come at the same time. Why? Because heaven, when it comes down, we get all the attributes. And when I am going in the realm of the Spirit, what I see comes into the realm. What you see comes into the realm. What you see comes in. And we all can see together. See, many times when, a, when an evangelist, ah, like Nathan sometimes, he is bringing what he is doing in the realm of the Spirit, what he sees, what he's imagined, he's bringing it down into the crowd. When he even changes the order of the service and says, I'm going to begin to pray for people, he's already seen it. But the thing is, different now services and what God wants to do here is he is seeing, he is releasing. And God wants to do something different here. He wants us to see. And us to come into agreement with what we see. There's going to be a corporate, fiery glory. Do you understand why we need the mind of Christ? How much more could we come into a service with the mind of Christ and a sanctified imagination instead of coming in with a bunch of clutter? Whether it's God tickling us or God dropping revelation straight from the throne, it's the same God who loves to have fun. See, I was a stuck-up preacher when he held me down on the floor and tickled me in front of my whole church. Never did I put myself down on the floor. Never did I do it as a minister. Never did I do it ever. Nor would I have laughed and rolled around on the floor. But see, that's what God did. He said, I'm coming down. I want to come down beyond your imagination. I want you to come down beyond your own comprehension. See, there's more for you to do than you think you can do. There's more for you than you can imagine. See, God says that he can do above what we could ever, what? Imagine or think. I don't know about you, but I can imagine some big stuff.
but he could do more. See, that word works real easy for most of us. Why? Because you don't imagine. And see, some of these fruits of blessings that were falling tonight, that God says is going to fall all the way through revival. We're full of money. We're full of healing. We're full of riches of, of the things of God. Scrolls were inside of these things. And they're going to land every service. And they're going to burst out and release fresh, new things. See, you can see all that God's done in all the different revivals and all the revelations. Every time we get a good one, we're like, man, that was great. And then, then we, I don't know about you, but sometimes I'm like, man, I don't know if God can outdo that one. It was just good. I mean, good. And then he does it again and again and again and again and keeps bringing these different kinds of nuggets, different ways. Some nights we're blown away all night. Some nights we're like, whoa, you know something's coming even when it's not come yet. See, you're already expecting, but you're expecting it from me. Now I want you to, to go that way. I want you to stop expecting from me and start expecting from him because the glory is about to come down. He's about to release his magnificent presence, and he's going to release his glory revelation, and it's going to come straight from the throne of God, and he's going to drop it just like it's hot. Yes, I meant to say that. He's going to drop it like it's hot. And ready to bust. And ready to burst. And ready to come into that greater level of presence. Some of you have been in ditches. And ruts. And tied up. Connected to that root. Guess what? It's time to go to that next level. Everything that has been in the way is being removed. Being plucked out. See, if some of you don't watch it, this young lady right here, back here, nine-year-old girl, is going to pass every one of us up because she's sponge-like. See, what some of you don't understand, this man's a sponge. This man's a sponge. This woman is sponge-like. You say, I'm not a sponge? You're almost a sponge. You're like a really good rag. You soak it up, but a sponge soaks it all up. And the only reason she doesn't soak it all up is because of blockages. And see, God's removing that. And then you have to imagine yourself out of those blockages. No longer thinking in that, that old thinking. See, most of us, we have that old thinking, old mindsets. See, God's in a, not in a box. He's in a universe. He's everywhere. He can do anything, anytime, anywhere. He will mess up your religion. He's going to mess you up. And he's going to mess us up until he comes all the way into this place. I saw by the Spirit of God coming real soon. I saw it. I saw it in a crate. And I said, God, what's this mean? And I saw by the Spirit of God it, this great big stool in a crate. And God said, it's being prepared. I said, what's it mean? He said, it's being prepared for shipment. I said, what's it mean, though? What, what, where? Where's it going? He said, it's going here. It's his footstool. It's about to be brought down. And it's going to come down in a crate and just opened up right here in the sanctuary. So in other words, he's going to come down, praise God, and he's just going to set. You know, when God sets, his blood's here. When God sets, his glory's tangible here. All the angels come here. Why? Because, whoo, just like the president goes without, he never goes without the secret service. God doesn't go without heavenly hosts. And I'm telling you, there's things about to pop in this place. It might not look like people are coming. It might look like there's just a few here and there. But I guarantee you, God says, when I put my footstool here, I'm going to sound the alarm. I'm going to sound the trumpet. And I'm going to cause your imagination to see my glory and see my 
what I can do. And the Lord says, I am going to do a new thing. I'm going to do new things like you've never seen. I'm going to do things that's going to make you think that, 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 that there's no way that I could outdo the next and the next and the next. But guess what? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to outdo myself, says the Lord. He's going to outdo himself. How can God outdo himself? See, we have seen nothing. And I saw just right here, all this room, all this room, just being took with his footstool. You know how much we can do just with the footstool of the Lord in this place? Especially if his feet's on it. He's looking for a place to rest. See, in other words, he can just sit and be in our midst, and it'll be just like he's there. And whether you like it or not, there's coochie coochie coos in there. There's the falling over the chairs there. There's that sound that comes out of this man there. There's supernatural revelation there. There's so much coming that's coming from there. They're coming. They're coming. I can see. I can see that they're coming. And they're coming for a purpose. It's already been written down. The time, the date has already been written down. I'm going to preach tonight about sanctified imagination. How many know the sanctified imagination is different? There is a cleansing in our minds that need to take place. In other words, our minds need to be on things above, not things beneath. There needs to be a reset of some things. And Webster sometimes is anointed. If you look up some definitions and the things of God in Webster, there's an anointing upon that. And Webster, uh, Webster's imagination means this, the power of the mind to form a mental image or concept of something that is unreal or not present. Such power of the mind used creativity or creatively to see 